Welcome, brothers and sisters, again to this uh, series of Bible study, Youth Edition, as I promised you last week. I hope uh, you get a chance to follow me on YouTube and you're being blessed by this. I welcome you to follow me more until we come to the end of this series. I know God will bless us all as we seek His face in His Word. Before we start our, uh, today's program, Let's bow down to pray. Father, we thank you for having mercy upon us. Thank you for giving us this chance to present your word, to share thy word. I pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, even as we open the sacred pages, our hearts may apply to the things that we are reading and the things that we are learning to our good and for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, Last time we were talking about identity crisis and we found out that uh, so many of us have not lived to the expectation of our calling as Christians. God would have loved that we identify with Jesus Christ. God would have loved that we identify with his name. But we walk with the name of Christ, yet we don't live according to the expectation of Jesus Christ. So there we saw that we we need to do some something. We need to, to, to rectify. We need to go back to God's will. We need to do what God expects of us as his children because we are here to reflect God's uh, character. Today I want us to study yet another very important thing as we make steps uh, towards uh, encouraging ourselves in, in family life. We want to uh, realize and recognize the role of the youth in the family. Yes, before young people get to start their own families, they are groomed and prepared in a family of their parents. And we are all here prepared in those families where we lived with our parents and with our siblings. In those families, that is the basic school. That is the place where we are trained and prepared to be better parents and good people ahead but if we neglect this school and neglect the issues of these schools, we may not get it right in the future. So we need to recognize God's uh, role, uh, our role in the family where we are being trained. We need to know our part that we should play in those families where we are being trained before we are, we are, we are ready to, to be good parents and to train other people also in the families that we will institute. Come with me to the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse 3 to 5, a common verse that we normally refer to in, 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 in when we are dedicating children and when we are, we are talking things to the children. Now the Bible says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that has a quiver full of them, that uh, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I love these words of the Bible. Because within here I can see a role, I mean several roles of, of, of the youth still living with their parents in those families. As a matter of being prepared again to start their own families. Number one, the Bible says, Children are a heritage, a reward from the Lord. So this one we can keep in mind. That even as we are going to start our families, we know that God rewards a couple with children. It is not in your making. It is not in your power to make children. It is not your thing. It is God's enabling that God rewards people with children. You know, it is God who instituted the family and God said, be fruitful and multiply. But even if, as he said that, there are some families who miss children. The couple come together and for one reason or another, they miss children. And in fact, we encourage them that the family is complete with the couple together. You may, you may, you may be satisfied with that and not stress up yourself because it is the prerogative of God to bless you with children. So if you didn't get the chance to get them, you can still hope into the Lord and pray like other families in the Bible they did. 
the family of Abraham waited for so long until they were very old, but later on God chose to bless them with a child. The, the family of Anna, they, they waited for so long, but later on God blessed them with a, a child. So it is God's prerogative to reward us with children. You know, some families go so far looking for children. They go to witch doctors, they go to doctors, they go to every place, they do every nasty thing looking for children. We need not to go that way because it is God who bless families with children. If we recognize that, then we will. Now, that is not what I wanted to take. I wanted to take here um, our role as, 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 as children of the family. To that family, the Bible says, we complete the family. We complete the family. I can be happy and I can be joyous that uh, God chose to have me be born in that family, to complete that family. Because for sure, a family that does not have children is so... We pass through a lot, a lot of frustrations. We pass through uh, a lot of trouble. We feel we are we, we are downtrodden. We feel we are not uh, fulfilling our purposes as human beings. It is true because if the desire to have children is within every woman and within every man, until they will hold their own child and nurse it, that is when they will be satisfied that they are uh, a human, a complete human being. Until a father holds his son, uh, his child. That is when now he is satisfied that he has, he has completed his purpose as a, as a man. Now, uh, that joy, that completeness of that family is what you have fulfilled as a youth and as a child in that home. So without you, they should have been frustrated. So uh, it is for me to know that I have fulfilled the completeness of this family so I have a greater responsibility and greater purposes in this life. So this is one of our major roles in, in the family. Number two, which I am getting here, is that happy is the man that have a quiver, has many children. Happy is the man. So we also complete the joy of the family as we are there. It is unfortunate that some parents have been broken hearted by their own children which God rewarded them with. Broken hearted. Some children and some youth here have frustrated their parents, have broken their heart and have lived in a way that the parents have not been happy for getting children. It is very unfortunate. But here the Bible says if our parents, if we would have lived according to our expectation as children of those parents, they would have been happy with us and happy for us to, to be with them. So uh, I encourage the youth to know today that you are expected to be the joy of your parents. The joy of your parents. And the parents who, who always think of you and who always want to do everything for you and who always rejoice because of your presence, even if they send you to school, they will be joyous and they will be thinking and praying for you because they know they have a child who has a future. Some, some youth have disappointed their parents. It's very unfortunate. This is not God's will for us. Number three, which I see in this verse that we have just read, that happy is the man that has a quiver of them all. They shall not be ashamed because they shall speak with the enemy in the gates. Ah, we are a security to the home when we are there. God expects that when we are children in that family, before we go to start our own families, we provide security. The Bible may be talking about literal security because it's talking about uh, speaking with the enemy at the gate. It's talking about um, uh, defending the home. This is, this is uh, against, well, nowadays we, we are fearful about Al-Shababs. Eh? So they are defending the Al-Shababs from coming to the home. They are defending the thieves from coming to the home. There's a literal security uh, uh, purpose that we would have filled as young men or as young ladies in the home. But again, you know, today we are talking about other forms of security. We are talking about social security. We are talking about financial security. And you know, there are so many people who are maybe blessed to have their own jobs and are earning before they start their own families. You are expected to provide financial family uh, security to the home. 
ladies can provide a social security to the home or, or even financial security to the home your presence in the home is also a security to the parents and to, to, to the siblings and to the people in the home so here the Bible says who whoever has children he knows that he will sleep in peace unfortunate again that some of our youth have turned against their parents and have become a threat to the parents than being a security. Some of us have beaten our parents, some of us have stolen from our parents, some of us have misused the investments of our parents, they are not safe with us around. We have not been a good security to the parents. If it has happened to you, you need to confess. Because here the Bible says our major role in the home is to be trusted with the security of the home. We can take care of the home, we can defend the home, uh, keep away the enemy, keep away the, the, the bad people from coming to the home. Our parents are safe with us around because their things are taken care of. This is a major role that God uh, would have loved that we accomplish while we are still in those families. I see another thing in uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 18. Very important role of the youth in their home. This one says, verse 18, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel for the Lord of hosts. Did you see that? Did you hear that? The Bible says that we and our parents join together. We become signs and wonders in our surrounding. What does it mean? We become billboards. God would want to advertise his character and his will to the world. Who is going to do it? The family members. The youth together with their parents would advertise who God is to those who do not know God. God would want us to be signs. God would want us to join our parents in prayer, to join our parents in Bible study, to join our parents in church, to join our parents in witnessing, to do, join our parents in telling people who God is. Unfortunate again that some of our youth do not care about church, do not care about the word of God, do not care about whether their parents are going to church. They have chosen their own things. They have gone astray and gone far from the word of God, not caring. They say church is for older people, church is for parents, or praying is for parents, Pray, or going to preach is for parents. They don't want to take part in this. Isaiah is saying, I and my children would be for signs and wonders in Israel. So it would be uh, worth noting that the youth in their home join their parents in publishing, advertising the will of God and the character of God in the surrounding where we they are. I see another confession from another parent. In fact, it's a bold de declaration from the parent Joshua in Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. Hey, he, he, let me refer to that. Joshua chapter 24 verses uh, 15. Joshua says this as he makes this declaration. It, if, and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye shall serve, whether the gods which your father served uh, that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is a bold declaration of a father who wishes that him and his children and his wife would serve the Lord only, God the creator of heavens and us and earth. Have we joined our parents in serving the Lord? Have we joined our parents in publishing God's will to the, to the surrounding? Have we joined our parents in praising, in praying, in preaching, in witnessing for the Lord? Because we are for signs and waters. I said a family is a school, a basic school, where we are being trained for better things in life, in the future. So even when we are around there in that family, we are expected by our parents to do certain things. And we are expected to live some kind of life which will, uh, will, will bring out our role and will train us for thus 
that same responsibility when we are grown up. So what does our parents expect of us when we are there? Number one, they expect us to take part in major family decisions. Families do decide things in life. They want to shift residence. They want to establish this business. They want to take you to school or they want to advise another one on another way. These are decisions, major decisions of the family. And the Lord is expecting us as our role in that family to be taking part in those decisions. There are some youth who do not care what their parents are doing, do not care what they are deciding. They are living alone, they are making their own things, they are doing their own ways. But here the Bible says, oh, we, me and my children, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. So that decision is made on a round table where people say, now we will not go this way as a family, we will decide like this, we will do like this, we will serve the Lord and we will witness for him and we will do like this. So we are expected also to take part in the major decisions making at home. Number two, we are expected to involve ourselves in the family economic activities. In the family economic activities. Your father, your parent, your ch mother is doing some small business somewhere and earning a living out of it. That is why you're going to, that is what is helping you to go to school, that is what is buying for you uh, clothes. The, it is expected for you also to get to learn of the trade of your parents and help them. Even if you are not going to make it your career, some have helped and have made it their career and they have helped themselves in life if it is in line with your talent. And, and, and if it is not yet, then you will are expected to help your parents in whatever business they are doing, whatever economic activity they are engaging. If they are tilling the land, you are expected to take the jembe and help your parents in the land tilling. If they are growing things, you help them in the growing of those things. If your mom is doing boga, uh, cutting skumawiki for people and selling, you young lady, you are from school, you are here for holidays, your mom is sick or your mom is going, she doesn't have to close business, you can take your time, go there, sit and cut the skumawikis and sell for that day and you bring your profits home. You should have helped and your mother should be very happy for you, for having helped in the trade of the family. Jesus is our example and Jesus did the same. I'm referring to the, my, my favorite writer writing about Jesus' childhood. And let's listen to this. Allow me to read a few paragraphs. What Jesus did when he, he was a child and he was at their, in their house. Jesus lived in a peasant home and faithfully and cheerfully acted his part in bearing the burdens of the household. He had been the commander of heaven and angels and had delighted to fulfill his word. Now he was a willing servant, a loving, obedient son. He learned to a trade, and without, with his own hands, he worked in the carpenter's shop with Joseph. In the simple garb of a common laborer, he walked the streets of the little town, going to and returning from his humble work. He did not employ his divine power or lessen his burden or lighten his toy. As Jesus worked in childhood and youth, mind and body were developed. He did not use his physical powers recklessly, but in such a way as to keep them in health that he might do the best work in every line. Did you hear what Jesus did? Jesus' career was not carpentry, but his father was. Now what he did? He chose to work with his father in the carpentry shop. They were making seats, they were making stools, they were making beds, and he used to go to the market to fetch nails and to fetch um, uh, wood for his father. He went to and fro, he used that plane, he did to fix things, he did help their home. In the family business, economic business, Jesus involved himself there. That is also expected of you, my dear young man or young woman. If you neglect to do this, then how do you know your fate? How do you know your future? Some people have helped their parents and have gotten a career out of it. And I'm, I, know, I know of some people who have been able to manage their family businesses after the demises of their own parents. You know, sometimes your parents are doing some business there, have a shop somewhere, they are managing, you never care to go there, but now they are dead abruptly and you need to manage that shop or that business so that it can help you in life. So many people have 
brought down those businesses, brought down their family economic uh, investments just because they didn't care to want to know what their parents are doing and what they are passing through or what they are, they are doing for, for, the, for the family. B, Jesus is our good example. Follow Jesus. Be, involve yourself in the family businesses and, and, and economic activities. Number uh, four, help in building good morals. Help in building good morals in the home. Yes, God is expecting that in this family where we are being prepared for adulthood, we also help in building good morals in the home, good characters. Because I said God is expecting that family to be a church where we are being prepared, where we are serving him. So uh, you find so many young people are being very bad examples for their, their siblings and even for their parents. The way we wear, the way what, what companies we keep, what friends we keep, what places we go, uh, 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 what things we, we engage in are things that degrade us morally. What would the Bible, uh, some, some young youth was advised in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let me take you there and see the advice of our father to some young, young youth here. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, and in spirit, and in faith, and in purity. We become an example as youth. So you are there. Your young siblings are looking unto you. You are their role model. If you do something that is not worthy, that is morally degraded, then you know you are showing those young people also to do the same as you are doing. So many young, th young children have followed their brothers and their sisters in doing what they are doing. When they are, they, are, they are given to liquor, those guys will be given to liquor. When they keep bad companies, those guys will keep bad companies. When, when they wear badly, you, you wear uh, wrong clothes, those guys for sure will wear those wrong clothes. So the Bible says, in purity, in faith, in conversation, in charity, we be good examples. We help in the family to build good morals. It is our responsibility and our role in the family. If we neglect that uh, the way many of us have neglected, then we fail to be prepared to become good people in the future as good parents. You well know that here, even in the church, there are so many parents who have not been good examples to their children. So many parents involve their children in very bad characters, in very bad things. We force them even to do that. Why? Because we were not ourselves at the, the time we were in our own families. So we need to, 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 to take care of this. We need to note this while yet we are still youth. Because this is the expectation of the Lord for us while we are still yet in our parents' homes. Uh, last but not least, we are expected to help in the, in the house chores. I don't know, you call them cause or chores. In the house chores, we are expected to, to help them. There is, there is cooking to do in the kitchen. There is dishwashing to do in the kitchen. There is cleaning the house. There is cleaning the compound. Um, there is a lot of work at home, and your parents have been doing it for you. Now you're grown up, you can cook. Now you're grown up, you can clean the house. Now you're grown up, you can clean your own whole clothes. Some people neglect this very important thing. Because we grew up in families where uh, they used to have house, house helps. These house helps need, used to wash our clothes, used to cook for us, used to prepare our beds, used to do for us everything. Now you are a grown up. And you will need to do these things when you go to your family. Where are you going to train? You need to cook now. You need to clean the house now. You need to prepare your bed now. You need to wash your own clothes alone. Some people think that they are being punished when they are told to wash their own clothes. When they are being told to wash it in the family clothes or when they are told to clean the house, they look at it as punishment because you used to be served. Let me tell you the youth, you must do this. Help the family in house course. Cook if it is cooking. Clean the house if it is cleaning the house. Um, I'm reminded of one young girl in the Bible who did this and she was very blessed and she found a very good family just because of being honest and truthful and being hard, hard working in, in her young uh, ages. 
This is in Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24, verse 15. The Bible talks of a young girl here. And it says like this. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born, in, uh, born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. She went down to the well to f uh, and, and filled her pitcher and came up. What was Rebecca doing when she was in, the, in their father's home? Rebecca was going to draw water from the well with a bucket. And she did not complain about it. She did not look at it as punishment. That was her work. Do you think she was only drawing water to bring home? No, Rebecca was drawing water to feed the camels. You people, you know how camels, how much water a camel, one camel would drink to fill that mom on, on, on his shoulder. Now, a, a young lady is going to the well to feed, I mean, to, 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 to drink, to give camels water to drink. The Bible continues to say that she did it several times. That is verse 19. And when she had done giving drink, giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for the camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all her camels. Good. This is a very young lady. Do you know what happened to her? That very moment she was drawing water, somebody was sent to pick her. And somebody was sent to look for a woman for some Isaac somewhere his master's, uh, his master's uh, uh, son. So Rebecca, by just doing this, found favor in the sight of God and was able to find for herself a good husband from the Lord and able to establish a good family. She did not have to trouble herself to look for people to help him because she already knew how to draw water to feed the camels. She already knew how to feed the family, to cook the, for the family. So this one encourages us, young girls and young men, when you are in your own houses before, when you are in your father's houses, before you go to establish your own home, please help in the house chores and let your parents' back be eased. Let them say, let them say, the, I, I, I have a son. Oh, I have a daughter who cares and who can ease in my burden a little bit. Don't let your parents trouble in sweat and in all toiling for you and you're sitting down. It is not very good for us to do that. Are there bad examples in the Bible? Yes, there are bad examples of those people who did not recognize uh, their role in the home and in the family and, and who did not join their parents in praising God and their faith is not very bad. I want to give you a few of them. One of them is Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Cain did not regard the voice of God. Cain did not regard the teachings of the church, which their parents uh, taught them when they were still young. And being disobedient, he went, he went and, 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 and uh, sorry about that. He went and uh, killed his, 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 uh, his brother. Cain killing his brother, that was very unfortunate. Why did he kill his brother? Because he was jealous. God was talking to him and told him, Cain, if you did good, then your, your, your countenance would have shunned up. But if you did bad, that's why you're frowning. Why are you frowning? It is because you did bad. Cain did not regard God's word and did not regard the teaching he got in church. And that's why he went the way he went. Another one is Amnon. This Amnon uh, entertained idleness at home and entertained uh, the lust of the flesh so that he masqueraded as being sick. That is in, in you get it in Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 6. Until that Amnon requested from his father that his sister come and assist him in the bedroom, his bedroom. Then when the sister Tamar came to prepare for him food and to give him, he, he raped 
he, he raped that, that girl, that young girl. That was very unfortunate. Why? Because he was entertaining evil thoughts. He was entertaining lust of the flesh. You remember the first time we were learning about three things in the world? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So one of them, Amnon entertained. Entertain the lust of the flesh. Like the youth of today, you would want to go to the internet to watch pornography, and uh, there's a lot of idleness. You'd want to engage yourself in the family cause. And now, this entertaining these bad things will get you somewhere. Look, this young brother raping his own sister at home. He broke the heart of the parents, broke the heart of his sister, broke the heart of the family as a whole, and he did not do it good. Did not do it good. Why? Because he disregarded the counsel of the God and counsel of his own parents. Another one is Samson. Samson in chapter 14 of Judges, verse 1 to 3 says, Samson went to Timnah and found a lady there and, and, and went into her and, and picked her to bring her home for wife. His father, in that verse, his father says, cautioned him. Father, uh, Samson, you know, you are all. You know you are called, you know you are a Nazarite, you know you are not supposed to marry from the Philistines. How then do you tell me to go marry for you a child from Philistines? And he insisted, he said, because he relied on his own knowledge, he insisted, he said, Father, yeah, it is him, is it that one who is pleasing for me. Then the parents did not have anything to do, they allowed him. When you go to chapter 16 of Judges, Samson made it a habit of sleeping with women from Philistines. Any woman, any harlot, anybody that came around, Samson was sleeping with them, given to fornication. Samson did not regard the word of God, did not acknowledge his call, did not listen to the parents, and did not care to do the things which would build him spiritually and, and, and enable him to accomplish his mission. So Samson is a very bad example in that, in that manner, and he was given to this one, and his death and his end came from these women that he was given unto. Are there good examples of, in the Bible? Yes, there are good examples which we can emulate. Uh, there is uh, Samuel. Samuel, you remember Samuel. When he was born, he was taken to church. And he helped the pastors in church. He helped the church businesses and things that were going on in church. And he learned there. And he became also a pastor himself later on in life. Because he regarded the word of God. He regarded the things of the church. There is David. David, when he was born, David was taking care of the sheep of his father and the livestock of his father in the wilderness. He didn't complain about it. That was not too big a task for him. So he said he did it with joy and he learned his lesson there. And you remember that David in his youth and his young uh, childhood, he was able to participate in the deliverance of, the, uh, of, of uh, Israelites from the Philistines. So David did... Uh, his role, he did acknowledge his role when he was at home and he was prepared. And you know, later on in life, this one became a king because God saw in him uh, obedience and reverence for him. There is Isaac. You remember Isaac? His father told him, let's go to the mountain to sacrifice. And Isaac moved his father, going to the mountain. There was no sacrifice. He asked his father. The father says, no, it's you. God has said that we sacrifice you. And because Isaac learned to join his parents in praying and praising God, he did not have a voice to decline the commandment from the Lord. Isaac simply laid on the altar and was, was ready to be sacrificed. I don't know how many youth are ready to go that far with their parents just because they have fear for the Lord. So Isaac was about to be sacrificed. And he agreed until God provided another sacrifice. There are good examples, there are bad examples in the Bible. We can follow and we can know what God's will is for us. Now, I know you asked me a question, as even as we come to the conclusion of this. How do we achieve this? How do we get there? Because we are surrounded with so many influences. We are surrounded with so many things. How do we get to accomplish this? I tell you, that question is asked in the Bible. And the answer is provided immediately. In Psalms chapter 119 verse 9, it's a verse that we normally we are used to referring to, but it has a good answer. Verse 9, Psalms 119 verse 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed there unto according to thy word. That is the answer. Young people, taking heed according to the word of God. Taking heed according to the counsel of God. That is the only way to make it. 
The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You remember I told you about Samson. Samson did not regard God's word. He relied on his own understanding. He thought beautiful women are to be slept with, are to be taken, brought home, and is elderly, and he can make his own decisions in this regard for the parents' advices. So here the Bible says, lie not in your own understanding. I know so many youth are going to school in the higher um, institutions of learning and you have collected a lot of knowledge and a lot of things and you know a lot and you have Googled a lot and you know so many things in life. But that one does not put you higher above the word of God. The word of God is still supreme. The counsel of God is still supreme and it's still final for our life. If we would take heed to the word of God and rely not in our own understanding, then we would have made it in life. Things would be very good. So I, I admonish you, I encourage you not to leave everything else behind and take the word of God for your life. And things will start to make meaning for you. Um, again, in uh, Psalms 145, verse 19, 18 and 19, Psalms 145, Verse 18 and 19, there's a, something I want to encourage you there with. The Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him in truth. Uh, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will um, hear their cry and will save them. What did the Bible say? The Bible says that we call upon the Lord in truth. Why? Because there's a lot of hypocrisy in church amongst the young people and amongst the parents also a lot of hypocrisy in church god would want to fulfill all our desires god would want to direct our paths god would want to give us the best families but only when we take heed and to they are his word and only when we do it in truth we don't go to church and again live another kind of life when they are back at home you're doing your own things you're going your own ways you're going contrary to what things you're learning in church we don't want to do that because the Bible says, if you call upon him in truth, he will fulfill the desires of your heart. There is several admonitions, several uh, ways of doing it, of uh, managing, achieving that goal that we have just said. Last but not least, let me refer you to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, and it says this. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that he everlasting God, the Lord God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even to the youth, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But the, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Now, what kind of youth do faint and do get weary? Those who do not wait upon the Lord. The Bible says they will grow weary and they will faint. But those who wait upon the Lord, the Bible says, He will give them strength like David. He will give them strength. They will mount up with wings like egos. So youth, when we engage ourselves in, in those spirits, uh, taking those spirits and, 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 uh, and liquors, and when we engage ourselves in taking drugs and, and, and uh, bangi, we, we will grow old faster and will die away and will faint still young. That is not what God is wanting us to do the way God wants us to go. God would want us to be strong people, doing his will, encouraging people and ministering uh, his word to people while we are still uh, strong, while we are still young. Say he will renew our strength. And surely you see in church there are so many people who they are old in age but they are young in stature. Why? Because they have learned to trust in God and to take care of their life. It is said of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2, verse 2, that he grew up in favor, uh, he grew in stature, and he grew in favor with God and with man. 
Why? Because he learned all these things that we have put together today from the Bible. I encourage you, young people, to follow God's word. You can make it. You can surely make it. If you regard the counsel of God, if you regard the word of God in your life, the future is so bright. Your family will be successful. Your future will be so blessed because the Lord has promised it. The word of God has said it. May God bless you. Thank you for following me again next week as we get to study uh, the reason to marry. God bless you. Let's finish this with a prayer. Father, we thank you for enabling us to do this Bible study and to learn what you expect of us while yet we are still living with our parents. As young youth, sometimes we have gone astray and we have done that which does not glorify you. We confess and we pray that you enable us to stand up again and to walk in thy will and to do that which is pleasing before thy sight. Help us again in the next program as we continue to present this for the sake of the people that they may be encouraged. In this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.